Former President Thabo Mbeki has had a long relationship with advocate George Bezos. It was a young Mbeki who had uh, constant contact and also assisting the ANC leadership during the 1956 treason trial. And then the ANC leader, Duma Nogwe, uh, who was also uh, a lawyer, would assign former President Mbeki to take notes during some of the political trials. Well, to get more information about advocate George Bezos, we're now uh, joined live from Johannesburg by former President Thabo Mbeki. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. All right. Uh, um, condolences, first of all, because this is somebody that you knew for a long time. Yes, indeed. It's a, it's a sad loss. It's a sad loss. We, of course, knew that George was not well, had not been well for quite some time. But nevertheless, when you lose somebody as valuable as he as he was, it, indeed, it's, it, it is a loss uh, for, for all of us. So throughout the course of the day and much of yesterday, he's being described by many as a human rights lawyer, which he was. But I think we forget sometimes that he was an activist as well, an anti-apartheid activist. Well, quite right, yes. I mean, the... Uh, I think the, the, the critical point about George Bezos, uh, and indeed I think some others, is that George uh, stood in the front line of a particular in particular area of our struggle, uh, which, which was a legal area. Uh, very, very committed, very determined to ensure that our country gets liberated. Um, so he... he Sure, he was a human rights person in, in that particular context, very committed to the, to the notion of liberation. I've said this thing before that, for instance, uh, George came, came, visited us in Lusaka, I think it was around 1987. Uh, he came uh, as a messenger. And the message was that Kobi Kutsie, who had been in contact, uh, was talking to Nelson Mandela, was said said that uh, they are discussing the regime was discussing the possibility of the release of political prisoners but what was worrying them was that the one that release might also serve as a signal to the masses of our people to rise up in an insurrection to overthrow the regime and and therefore so long as uh, this fear on the part of the regime was not addressed they would not release the prisoners uh, so uh, George came with this message, but not only as a messenger, but also as a strategist to engage the ANC leadership on this matter to say, well, if this is what the regime is saying. How do we respond to that? And so he participated in this discussion, not as a lawyer, but as a strategist to say, what, is, what step do we take in order to secure the liberation of our people, starting with this step of the release of political prisoners? Uh, just to finish that particular mm -hmm. story, we said, okay, uh, when you get back, George, just say to them, we are ready uh, to send in a couple of us, it was Mac Maharaj and myself, to come into the country, to talk to the regime, talk to the political prisoners, talk to our people, and, and handle this thing of the release of the political prisoners. Uh, in a particular way, agreed, the matter of what would then happen afterwards would, would, would then be dealt with later. But I'm saying George Bezos came with that message, but also as part of a strategist, a strategist to say what, how, what do we do to respond to this? And therefore, I would I would never be able to see George Bezos only as a lawyer. He's so a lawyer, very an excellent lawyer, an outstanding mm -hmm. lawyer, but also very very committed uh, to the struggle for the liberation of our people. And at uh, a time when uh, being a white person in South Africa to join causes such as this um, would have come with great discomfort to him. I, I'm, I'm not sure that it would have come as a, a discomfort. Uh, I think that uh, George, I've never ever had any sense that uh, George had ever had, had ever had any notion other than I am part of the liberation struggle. 
Uh, I mean in the sense that this would have come with harassment to his person from the regime. Oh, of course, naturally. Yeah. Naturally, by, by taking the positions he was, was taking uh, in support of the struggle, he was defining himself as an opponent of the regime and of late, later as an enemy of the regime. Naturally, quite correct, Peter. Uh, but uh, he, he was obviously said he has no choice but to take a position like this. His conscience would not allow him to take any, any, any different position. And he was always concerned, it seems, uh, with the most vulnerable, the most disenfranchised, and those that uh, desperately needed somebody uh, to give uh, a voice and their story to be told. Well, my, 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 uh, my sense always, Peter, of George Bezos over many years was of a very a humble person. Let them use, let me use a particular word, in a sense, a simple person. George was not complicated. He was not, uh, didn't have highfalutin ideas about himself. In a sense, a man of the people. And therefore, once you took a, we took a position to say, we must fight to end oppression for the liberation of the people. I think in a sense, by definition, uh, it had to take a position which says, the most marginalized, the most disadvantaged, the most oppressed, the most suffering, surely must be the person that I ally myself with, uh, because the, that that really is in his heart, in his mind, it, it within his value system. Mm. All right, let's take you down memory lane a little bit. Uh, at some point in time, you related a story of how you used to go to court uh, during the trials of activists uh, per instruction of uh, advocate Duma Norka. Can you uh, share those memories with us a little? Well, that was really the, uh, then, that was the treason trial. That's the 1956 to 61 treason trial in, uh, in, in Pretoria. Uh, because the, that was the, the one major political trial at the time. So uh, indeed, I would, I would travel to court there just to, to be present, to listen to the proceedings, particularly when the, the defense started their defense. I was, I was in, in court the day that uh, the leader uh, of, of the group that was defending the accused, that's Isimazels. Uh, the day that is amazing so opened the defense, uh, the argument for the defense in that in the, that here in Pretoria, uh, and indeed we had to to follow what was happening because we did not know where this was going to end, uh, and so it was necessary to be to be sensitive about what was going on in court because we didn't know quite know what the political mm. consequences would be. So during the Rivonia trial, your father, Govan Mbeki, was one of the trialists. Advocate uh, Vizos, no, he, was he wasn't no, he at wasn't. that stage. He was not that. He was not accused in the treason trial. No. Okay. So I just wonder: um, Have you ever had a chance to have conversations with Advocate Bezos about the way he handled some of the trials of these uh, uh, famous cases? No, I no, I wouldn't say so. We mm. wouldn't. I I can't remember us discussing any particular case, uh, any case in particular, mm. except of course cases that uh, uh, he handled once we came back into the country. And for instance, uh, uh, I remember the case when uh, there was a clash between the ANC and the IFP people. Uh, around the then ANC headquarters in, in Johannesburg, around Shell House, as it was called. Um, that ended up in court, that issue. And uh, George was uh, our, our defense counsel. And naturally, we would then discuss that particular case with him. Uh, there was another case which related to uh, uh, the one of the newspapers took us mm. to court because of... Uh, a statement that the ANC had made about the authorship of one of the articles, and again, George was uh, it was our defense counsel, and, and he actually won that case for us. And of course, uh, during the, 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 the TRC, 
when George would go to the TRC to defend the victims, we would have the, an interaction with him about, about, about those sorts of cases. So, um, but that was more, as you can see, Peter, these, yeah. are, these were matters that were operational. They were current. And so we would engage with George as a lawyer to engage this thing uh, with regard to all, all elements of it, uh, of, of all of these cases. But of course, uh, uh, always informed, always yeah. informed by the fact that this, this was more than a lawyer. This was a combatant for the liberation of our people. Let's talk a little bit about him, the person. Um, you know, I, I've seen him shed a, t a few tears uh, over very sensitive issues. And I, I, one just gets a sense that uh, he felt things, particularly the injustice of other people, very personally. Well, quite right. Uh, quite right. George was very, a very sensitive person. Uh, a humane, a humane person, uh, no, not distance, not cold, but a real human being with warmth, with feeling. And that's why it was always uh, easy to interact with him, uh, to engage him. And indeed, I think you're quite, quite correct that uh, he would feel personally uh, any suffering, any sense of hurt, uh, to the point that indeed, that indeed he would cry. But uh, he was that kind of person. And uh, what, what kind of legacy do you think that he leaves behind? I mean, chapters of South Africa's history will certainly have his name there. Um, and he, he worked right to the end, before democracy, after, and it, to almost his last day. Yes, but uh, the, uh, I have been saying that, you know, the uh, George Bezos... Uh, First of all, the, there's, a, there's a, an, an, an area of our struggle which I think we have been under, underplaying. That is this, the, the legal front, the legal front of the struggle. Because that struggle was very important in the course of the struggle to defeat the apartheid regime. It continued to be important in the process of the building of the reconstruction of the new South Africa. And George Bezos was at the center of all of that together with other outstanding lawyers like Ram Fisher, uh, uh, like Sidney Kentridge, uh, like Arthur Chaskelson, uh, George himself, lawyers like this, Joel Joffe, uh, who were uh, um, very, very, they, they led us. They led us in the counter-offensive on the legal side. So you have, and I'm saying George was very outstanding within this group, very group of very outstanding people. But you see, in addition to the skill as lawyers, that outstanding skill that they had, that George had uh, as a lawyer, this was somebody also who was very committed, very committed to the notion, the practice uh, of ensuring that our country gets liberated. And so he was also therefore driven by a particular value system, uh, not just by the fact that I'm a, I'm a good lawyer, I must win a case, mm -hmm. but there's a value system which says he's got to pursue this matter, uh, indeed of a better life for all of mm -hmm. the people of South Africa, as equals. And therefore also, as a consequence, his commitment to serve the people. That's why he would be very sensitive to the suffering even of individuals. Now, now, Peter, this is, a, this is a, a George Bezos. I think in terms of a legacy, I think that's a legacy he leaves us, that what we need, and I'm quite certain I would say this about South Africa today, this is a kind of person that we need, who's got the skill, who's got the value system, who's got the commitment to serve the people because we, there are these enormous problems in this country that we have not solved in the last 25 years of poverty, of inequality, of racism, and all of that, of sexism. And you need, you need a whole generation of people of the kind that George Bezos was. Uh, I'm saying with the professional skills, with the value system, 
and the commitment to serve the people. I think if we all tried, many of us tried, who had the benefit and the fortune to have known George Business, we tried to help to build this kind of person uh, among, our, among mm -hmm. our, our fellow citizens, South Africans, I think that would be the best tribute that we would pay to, to George Bezos. All right. And, you know, he's a young Greek boy who came to South Africa, but uh, always uh, a South African at heart, I, I guess. Very South African, but never lost, never lost contact with Greece, uh, never lost contact with the fact that uh, he, was, he was of Greek origin. And he, this was never a clash, this was never a contradiction uh, to be a South African of Greek origin, but to be committed to both, to a better South Africa, but also a better Greece. And it wasn't just here in South Africa that he fought for the rights of others, uh, across the continent as well. I remember him uh, representing Morgan Trangirai at one stage. Yes, of course. I mean, he would... Uh, in terms of the region, uh, him and, and a number of other lawyers, I was talking, for instance, about Sydney Kentridge, who was, I think, a, a, a judge, for instance, in Botswana and, and places like that. Uh, so indeed, uh, uh, he would, uh, the George Bezos would not merely be a liberation fighter for the liberation of the people of South Africa, but would be a fighter for the liberation of other Africans. So he yeah, yeah, wouldn't be you wouldn't be surprised at all to see him operating in Zimbabwe. All right. So as we conclude, what would you say then is uh, the one thought that uh, comes to mind for you uh, that will help us place George Bezos in our minds properly? Well, you, you know, Peter, the uh, you you are familiar with this. That, for instance, the. Uh, the ANC talks about its renewal. Uh, that is an edge. It was a matter that was discussed and agreed at the last uh, conference uh, of the ANC in December 2017, uh, that the ANC needs renewal. I'm raising this thing. Because again, the ANC, uh, with President Ramaphosa as president of the ANC, has correctly pointed out that the ANC itself in the eyes of many of our people, is seen as the, the very exemplar of corruption. And this is a governing party. And when you have a governing party which is like that, then it means the country is in crisis. Therefore, I think what is necessary for some of us is to take up that call for the renewal of the ANC. And in the process of taking up that issue of renewal, we must take this example of a George Bezos. To say when the ANC says it is renewing itself, its membership must be of the kind that George Bezos was. That only when the ANC becomes like that again, it's only then that it will be able to discharge its responsibilities to the people of South Africa. I think that's what we need to do. And I think that's the way we should remember George Bezos. President Mbeki, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time and uh, helping us remember George Bezos. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Peter.